the booth, that's how I spill pain. This ain't a scrimmage, this is real game. I've been cold chilling since 88, like I deal with Kane. Kane, deal, cold chilling. I might see hot with the flows, y'all just bringing back that old feeling. That old okay, feeling live on ACTV with YD, aka Serious Business, aka Bad News Finest. We live out in New Jersey right now with the man Double R representing Flashy, Flashy Hip Hop, whatever you want to call it. Check him on Instagram. Right now, I'm very honored to have him right here with me to have a very clean and nice, deep conversation. What's up, my bro? What's up, man? How you doing? Chilling, chilling, chilling. Right, right, How you? Right, right. How you? Finally happy to have this sit down because we've been pushing it, pushing it for the past three absolutely, weeks. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm here, though. I'm here, though. Yeah. So I'll let you, you know, say um, what's up to everybody that's watching right now. What's up, everybody watching over there, man? This your big man, Flash. Flash is hip hop on all social media. Check me out. What's up to y'all? Listen, Flash, I'm about to make that shit my real name. Pop some click and hit the booth, that's how I spill pain. This ain't a scrimmage, this is real game. I've been cold chilling since 88 like I deal with Kane. Kane, deal, cold chilling. I no doubt. Uh, like, can you just bring it back to where it all started for you in hip hop? Uh, as far as in the industry? Or, yeah. Well, in the industry, um, I've been doing this for a long time, man. I started back in the um, mid-90s, I say. You know, running around with my partner then, you know, we, we was running around doing shows with the Lyricist Lounge and stuff like that. And I, I caught my first deal back then. Um, we was a group called Cypher Complete. Um, he ended up getting locked up, you know what I'm saying, going away for life. And uh, I just kept going and kept pushing and kept pushing. Then I ended up meeting my, my man to set free, catching a deal with Steve Rifkin mm -hmm. on SRC Records later. Um, you know, just things didn't work out there. I ended up being on Rough Riders after that. You know, that stint took its course. And then now I met uh, Tech from Smith & Wesson and we started our own ind independent company, Culture Pushers Collective, and that's where we are now. Great, great. Um, what was the energy back then when you got introduced to this culture, to, 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 to the culture, you know, um, the lifestyle, the energy that was there that, you know, uh, people was looking at it like, you know, I mean, this thing is gonna come in five, ten years, and then yeah, you're gonna get yeah, out. yeah. I mean, definitely, people definitely was looking at that, especially like our parents and stuff yeah. like that, because we was like sampling their music and making it hip hop, mm -hmm. you know, some shit they didn't understand. But um, the energy was good. The, the energy was great, like from our demographic, like just seeing it grow amongst the people, you know, and and, and um, you know, just the, you know, just the lyrics of it and just right. just the originality of it. it was just something different. So the energy was crazy. It just started taking over by storm. So we knew it was going to be. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't know it was going to be as big as it is today. All right. But I knew it was something that I wanted to get involved to be part in. Of. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Um. And and what about Rough Riders? How you got? Um. How you, how do you end up being a member of Rough Riders? How you got signed? Uh. With, with the Rough Riders thing, like I said, I was already I already had a record deal with Steve Rifkin. Mm -hmm. Um, that's SRC Records. He signed. Um, he signed um, at the same time. He signed myself, Akon, who's from Senegal, uh, David Banner. And there was a couple other artists, um, and uh, it just wasn't working out over there. It, this, this, this was kind of at the time when the South was emerging in the hip hop. So a lot of the East Coast lyricism was, you know, just taking a back burner. So he really didn't know what to do with me. And um, through a mutual friend of my manager, he introduced me to um, to uh, Dee's little sister, who's now my fiance. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and uh, you know, we went, met him in Harlem. I spit for him. He heard some records, you know, and then after that, the rest is history. Right, you know what right, I mean? right. Um, the, the first record that I heard you on on the Riff Rider compilation, I think it was the, the, the Redemption Riff Rider. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get, get, get wild, wild get wild. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. And yeah. Rest it's, in it's, Peace cartoon. So, yeah. uh, um, like, how that record came about? It's, I guess it's, it's, it's the story behind that record, you know what I'm saying? Um, like wrap it up real quick. Yeah, yeah uh, 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 the, the original record that I heard, it was produced by Dr. Dre, and Busta Rhymes was on the chorus, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and like the way the industry works, you know, right. certain things don't get cleared, they just don't make it, you know what I'm saying? So right. uh, we, had, we, uh, we uh, got the beat redone by Scott Storch, and me being the new heavy, Voice of the R at that mm -hmm. time, they they want I redid Buster's hook. I didn't redo the words. I, all all I did was say his say his words, and they took it to him to get the okay. He heard it. So he, he was the it. one who wrote it exactly the way you the said way it. I said it. He okay. he wrote it exactly. I mean he he did it. So all I right. did was just go in the booth and mimic him. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess for some reason, you know what I mean. He 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 didn't get cleared to be on the record. So I went in and mimicked him. And they said we'll let Buster and and, and, and them hear it. And and if he say okay, then it's all good. And, 
Yeah. How did. important the lyrics are to Flashy? Lyrics? Um, I mean, lyrics are very important, man. I mean, lyrics is, is to me, to me, the number one thing. Right. Um, because, you know, lyrics is what we listen to and then it's what we're influenced by. Um, they could be, they could, they, they could help you right. or they could be detrimental. True. You know what I'm saying? So, so today I think, I think that we need more lyrical artists that are getting light. And when I say lyrical, I, I don't mean just being creative lyrically. I yeah. mean, just saying something. You know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, to me, Tupac, DMX, they're not, to me, they're, to me, they're not the most super duper lyrical dudes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. For us saying something like, oh, you see how he put that together? But what they're saying, what they say. it's what, what they're saying hits you in your heart. So, so you, you know what I'm saying? I'm and so glad, many people I'm, relate to it. I'm glad I'm hearing this from somebody real like you because I know deep down that you know what I mean Pac is not the greatest lyricist of all time. Right. But the way he he laid the, down the, his the lyrics, the way he laid makes it down, more sense comparing to other comparing artists. To other and artists. that's what that's why he had and the that's why the, that he has. Exactly, and that's why the masses took to him. Exactly. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right, right, it's right. not you know like like when you compare him and Biggie. Biggie was the Biggie was the huh, huh, he he right, he, right, right. he he the flow. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and even to me, you know, no disrespect to Big, but to me, he wasn't the most lyrical dude either. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But he was lyrical. Pac, you know, Pac had the songs that hit you in the heart. Yeah, yeah, he was different. It's he like was. even X. Like, you know, X will make you, you know, he got, he says prayers and things like that. It's, it's, it's what you say. Like, and I just think that the, the powers that be now, they're, they're promoting more things that are detrimental to, the, to our society and right. to the society, period, mm -hmm. than things that could help our society. Like, back in my day in hip-hop, the lyrics was more... You know, we 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 had gangster rap. You're not lyrical. You ain't part of the, like. Oh, stay, you couldn't get in. You you couldn't even get in. If you were not a lyricist, you on the sideline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and so, but now you know, with social media and everything, you could you put your own shit out. And if and if a million people take to it, who true, are who true. are we to say you not hot? There's That's no right. gatekeepers the way it used to <laughs> That's be. That's right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, is it important today to be signed on a major label? No. I don't think so. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it like this. It depends on what you're looking for out of the game. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, definitely, a major label can get you more famous. They can definitely get you out there faster and, and to more people's eyes. But, mm -hmm. if, you, but if, if you see these dudes and they're taking a the slow route, and they got a crew of dudes that's all willing to put something into the pot and we help this one thing grow right. and it helps us all grow. You put some paper into the pot and you get that out there and you push it out there. By the time a major label comes, they're gonna offer you something that yet yeah, might take you, let's say, a year to make. True. Right? Right. Right then and there. But, well, but you're gonna have to give up half you understand what I'm saying? Of what you make forever. So why do that? I'd rather take the slow grind, you know what I'm saying? And own make, 100%. And own 100% of right. my shit. That's right. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? So I say no. You know, I, I, I say you don't really need a major label. I think you just need, I say if you don't have the finances to back yourself, that rather than finding a label, go out here and do a deal with somebody that wants to be an investor. You know what I'm saying? And right. make those terms a little bit more even. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, they said uh, hip hop saves Black America. Yes or no? Hip hop saves Black America. Yes. That depends, man. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, I I I I, I can't lie, man. I think the hip hop culture is hurting. It's hurting our youth right now, man. Be and, and it's because of it's it's more because of the powers that be that's pushing the negative aspects of hip-hop to the youth. In my day, I would say yes. It saved my life. Mm -hmm. It saved a lot of people's lives. It, it, like I said, it, it, it introduced me to religion. It introduced me to a, 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 a way of not wanting to sell drugs because right. they was, yes, I might hear a Cool G rap and he's talking some street shit or whatever, whatever, but then I also hear Chuck D. Mm -hmm. That, that, you know what I mean, who, who you gives you night of living bass heads yeah. and the consciousness inside of it, so you have a choice. Now it's like these kids have no choice. It's like in order for me to make it in hip hop, I gotta be a drill artist. Mm -hmm. I gotta rap about killing somebody and then go out here and really do it. 
And that's what these kids think that they have to do. So, I mean, saying hip hop saves black America, I would say not right now. But right. it, you know what I mean? But it could get a lot of young dudes out the street the same way making it to the NBA can. Yeah. But what's the, what's the, <laughs> what's the, what's the, what's the uh, you know? Yeah, I feel you. You know I, what I mean? I but I'm, I'm, I'm just being real, man. I, I, I think that it's, it's, it's in a, it's in a, it's in a good state for the business side. But for what it, for, but for what the business is pushing to our, to, to our you, yeah. Right now, it's like crack in the eighties, man. <laughs> crack in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, on the other hand, we're trying to finish this documentary called Back to the Source. You know, uh, putting African artists, American artists, and European artists all together. That's dope. That's going to be followed by a three days festival where we are going to select all of them to come to Senegal for three days, West Africa. We're gonna have concerts, press conferences, cultural exchanges, radio and TV tour, yeah. and at the end of a tourist visit. Okay. So this is gonna be the first time we gather in three continents in one. Mm. What do you think about that? Man, I think that's amazing. I think that's amazing. Where y'all gonna try to do it at? In um, Senegal? Yeah, it's gonna happen in Senegal right after the um, after the release of the doc. You know, definitely late this year or early next year. I think sure. that's amazing, man. I think that's amazing. If you could pull that off for the because, culture, man. Yeah, definitely. Of course, I, for I the think, culture. I think that's 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 oh, that'll be big for the culture. Always for man. the culture, because hip hop today, after forty plus years, is the only culture that the whole world has in common. But every four to five years, we have a new wave of artists coming with new sound, new touch new style, new way of dressing, new everything, Absolutely. even new languages. So we've reached out to a point where um, the respect is not there no more. The creativity in its true sense is mm -hmm. not there no more. That's right. The message is gone, which that's why we call it back to the source. Back not to, the to source. tell these youngsters to rap like the oldies, but they need to do their research to know where they're going. Because if you don't know where you're coming from, you don't know where you you're going. You don't know where you're going. Yeah. I love, I love that idea, man. Yeah. You got to make sure me and the boys is a part of that. Of course. Man. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because these kids nowadays, man, listen, I, I, I even tell them when I have talks with the younger successful artists, I say, listen, it's not right. about, it's not about your sound. The sound's going to evolve. You know what I'm saying? As, you know what I mean? But it's more about what you're saying, and think about what you're pushing. Not saying that you can't say that either. You can say that because that, if, if that's what you really are, and that's what you really want to put out there, but also have some balance, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Do you love your mother? Do you love your kids? Talk about that too. Yeah. Do you? Do you? You know. You know what I'm saying. Do you, would you? Would, would you want them to get into your lifestyle? Yeah. Talk about how hard you working to, to not have them be in that lifestyle. How do you lifestyle. see yourself five to ten years from now? Put put all of that out there as yep. well. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. And have some balance. And I think that hip hop would be in a good place. It just if it had more balance. But to be more specific, like when I say 2022, hip hop, what do you see? 2022. Yeah, I do see. I do see a lot of lyricism coming back into play, though. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I'm I'm seeing a lot of lyricism back into play. I'm I'm seeing a lot of dudes, especially from the East Coast, getting together doing records that 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 wouldn't have back in the day, like how the South did it. Cause the South did it. They they saw how we was moving and said we're gonna do the opposite, and they stuck together and they blew. But I see a lot of that happening now. You know, um, I'm seeing a lot of younger artists come up. And, and, and want to be lyrical and, and still know how to make the trap songs and the bouncy records. So I see hip hop getting to a better, better, better place as long as OGs like us stick around and, and, and you know, just try to give them some guidance, man. You know? Tell us about your collaboration with Tim. Um, what how did it start? What you okay. guys are working on right yeah, now? Absolutely. What the world needs to know yeah, right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Tell us. me and Tech, we got the, um, the, uh, the entertainment company, Culture Pushers Collective. Is 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 bigger than just right. um, a label, though. It's more about us just bringing people um, together, you know, man, woman, and child of any culture that you represent, because every everything is a culture. You got a music culture, sports culture, fitness culture, you know, what what, what you're doing, the podcast right. and the culture, mm -hmm. but just bringing those together who are all pushing the culture. To, pushing the culture forward for the right cause. You understand what right. I'm saying? So if you're pushing the culture forward, then you're a culture pusher. So, you know, and um, that was, that Tech came up with that name. And, uh, you know, when we just rocking together, man, you know, we looking for artists, you know what I'm saying, the sign, producers, you know, and we just been working with a lot of different people. You know, we got an album that we getting ready to drop, to, you know, collaborative with me and him called uh, Cecil Hotel. You know, I don't know if y'all know, know what that is in LA, yeah. the, the Cecil Hotel where, where they found a lot of the dead bodies. Right, right, so, but right. it's, it's some science that behind, you know, we call that. I'll okay. say that for later. But um, I met Tech uh, through a um, partner of mine named Innocent. He all, he's, he's from Brooklyn too. He's an artist, 
also a member of Culture Pushers. Uh, he introduced me to Tech. I wanted to do a joint with him. You know, I saw Tech was following me on, on Instagram and liking a bunch of my stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I you know, Smith, Smith & Wesson is like one of my favorite groups. So I finally got to meet um, Tech and uh, we linked up, did one freestyle together. Just, just the magnetic attraction as brothers came, and, you know, and then he, he said, listen, let's come together and form this and, you know, and let's do it for the culture. And that's, and that's just what we're doing, man. We're pushing the culture forward, man. Great. So, Great. you know, make sure y'all look out for that, man. Culture yeah. Pushes Collective. It's coming. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, tell us about um, the evolution of Rough Riders ever since you joined, because um, I know with X passing, you know what I mean, certain things have changed. Mm -hmm. um, Eve is not really active like she used to. Probably she got, that's what, maybe she, because it's because she got married or she's out of the country. I don't know, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like the evolution and of baby. Rough Riders, the babies and all that, yeah. that kind of slow, you know what I mean, her career. Right process a little bit, you know. Right, Locks right. still touring, you know what I mean? And uh, it's yeah. like Fat Joe said, price went up ever since after the verses. Right, you right. You know what I mean? So I people mean, started. As far as rubber, I, I think all of us, all, all of us that was with the original, you know, the original crew, everybody just grew up and spread their wings, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's always still love for the all. We all still family. DNY always still one call away for anything that we need, you know what I'm saying? So. You know, other than that, man, you know, we see each other as love. Any type of, any time we want to collaborate, you know, but when X passed away, that hit all of us hard, you know what I'm saying? But um, Rough Riders, you know, that's, it's, it's bigger than the music, so that's, that staple is here, you know, with the, just, Family. just, yeah it's, yeah, it's worldwide, you know what I'm saying? Family. So, you know, you know, we got, so, the, we got the younger generation coming up too, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. Yeah, so. I'll be on the lookout for that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I'll yeah, be on the lookout yeah, for that. Yeah. So, like, what was your best, your best memories of X? <laughs> I bet I got so many of them, man. Um, I just got so many. I mean, okay, I'll just say the best memory was my last memory of him was when uh, we 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 I, he was in L.A. working on his album in Snoop, Snoop Studio. Okay, and and uh, he had no idea that me and my fiance was engaged yet. So that studio's packed or whatever, and she goes and shows him the ring. And he just like, what? What the? He looks at D like, how the fuck you let this happen? With a, with a nigga that fuck with us? How the fuck you let this happen? So that that was my last time ever being with him, you know? But he gave us love and said he was going to come to the wedding and bless, bless and gave us his blessings. Right. I posted it on my Instagram, so if any of y'all want to see that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But that was my last memory of him. Yeah, X was amazing, man. After. Yeah, man. X was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, do you think that, um, we were talking about it earlier, do you think that the language can be a barrier in hip hop? I, I, I think it can, but I think it shouldn't. Because, I, because like you said, it's, 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 it's a vibe, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's kind of like how, like I was saying, like when we first started vibing to the Nigerian music, we didn't really know what they were saying. It was more of a vibe. It was like, oh, I like this vibe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think the more that you get into the vibe, like, oh, this is yeah, something new. Yeah, you know? yeah. Then, then, it, then it makes you more want to learn what they're saying. Yeah. It's kind of just like with anything, like with even even with hip hop, like just 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 regular hip hop, like the beat gonna catch you and and make you listen. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things you don't catch lyrically until you we rewind it and listen again and again but is that song gonna make you rewind you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so if the vibe is there you know what i'm saying then you'll want to listen more you know what i mean okay. kind of like how you said like when you know the language barrier and you yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you fuck with hip-hop but you wanted to listen a little more you know what yeah, i mean really course, understand it that's i think that's how we are with and especially be able to understand what they're saying that's absolutely yeah 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 right. um do you think uh hip-hop needs beef to move up do you think beef is necessary in hip-hop today? Beef? No. Like, real beef. No. Because we got battle, no, we got no, clashing, no, no, and no, we got no. beef. That's what I'm saying. Beef? No. Competition? Yes. Yes. It's a, it's a sport. Yeah. It's going to get competitive. It may seem like beef because of things that a rapper might say. Right. But there's certain lines that I think you should cross in there, and being, and being an MC, you should know that. If it is beef, it is it's, it's beef thing because things happen in the world. But I don't think that hip hop needs beef in order to excel. I think we'll do a lot better without. What was beef. that line you said on that? Keep the gun cock joint. If it's beef, it, what did I say? If it's beef, 
I don't know what I said. If it's beef, niggas know what it is. <laughs> niggas, niggas, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. like, to me, real beef is not going to be on wax. No, it's not Period. on wax. Listen, I'm going to tell you this, and this is from a, 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 a I'm an old MC, man. Yeah. Like, listen, I'm with the battle shit. But if you, if, if you say a certain thing about me on record and it's really beef, I'm really, when I see you, I'm really going to punch you in your shit. It's not going to be I see you on the other side of the club and it's all good and right. me and my dudes ain't going to do nothing to you. Yeah. So that's how you know half of these dudes ain't really about what they, what they, what they talking anyway. Damn so it ain't really no beef anyway. Mm -hmm. So all the facade, all this internet shit you seeing dudes, where you at? I'm going to pull up and all of that. Other than them Chicago boys and boys out here who really drilling, this shit ain't really no beef. That, but but some, some stuff is beef before, their, before the music. Before music, right. Like they have beef and then somebody out this click get on and somebody out this click get on and then it's, but that's, that's, that's beef that poured into the music, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think that beef is necessary in hip hop, but competition definitely is. Right. <laughs> What's the most important thing in Flash here today, in general? What you mean, life in general? Yeah. Oh man, just being it legacy, man. I just want to leave, leave, leave something when I'm gone, just for my family, and this, and just know that it's going to be here forever, generations. That's the most important thing, man. Like when I when I when I look at some people's families, and I look at the last person, like the the, the person who created all everything for them, right. and how that and 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 people just pissing that away or just going out here and not continuing the, you know, just the legacy, yeah. you know what I mean? It, 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 really just, it, it makes me think a lot. So the most important thing for me is now that where I'm at and I'm up in age a little bit is just, you know, just planting something here and, and, and being able for it to live on for generations, man. How do you look at your career five to 10 years from now? From now, yeah. my, I mean, my career, um, Five well, to ten years from now, just enjoying it, still, still being able to enjoy it. You know what I mean, and still be doing it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm more stepping into the entrepreneur thing and signing all this and getting into different things. You know, me and Tech gonna be shooting movies and series and all this shit together. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we working on some. Shit, I want to be in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we working on Represent Street. Africa. Yeah, yeah. You know Tech do his acting thing. He was just in the Tales, the um the Ir Irv Gotti show on BET oh, Tales. Yeah, you know Tech oh, do his right, acting right, right, thing. Right. Yeah, he was on there. So um yeah, so we um we working on movies and bigger things, but I, I, I look at it as far as my musical career, five to ten years from now, real talk, two words, still going. Boom. Period. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, so like, you know, to everybody that's watching right now, especially the youth, what is your message to them? Yeah, my we live in a crazy time, 2022, you know, the power that be, you know what I'm saying, um, the white supremacy, you know, um, Africa being ignored into, onto, you know, to, 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 to many levels. Like your message in general, especially the youth who are trying to change their life or their world or they interact for the better. Oh man, I'm, I, it's just try to stay as positive as you can and, and put God first, man. I feel like if you put a law first, He's gonna guide you in the right direction, regardless of what's going on. But you know, like I tell everybody, I, I mix a lot every day. We pray every day, but you got to put some effort behind that prayer. Cause you, you 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 go out here and do the wrong thing, and then come say, "Pray forgive me." Wrong thing, pray forgive me. You know. So first and foremost, put a lot first. A big thing with the youth, man. It's like, man, this right here, man, and this social media, man. This ain't the real world. It's not the real world. Some things. Maybe, but it's not the real world, man. So you can't believe everything you see and you definitely can't believe everything that you hear. Mm. So always just do the homework yourself and take the best part out of everything, whether it's the Bible, the Quran, what someone tells you, a message. Take the best part out of it for yourself. You can't believe everything. Do the homework yourself. All right. So um, what do you want everybody to know about Flashy that they don't know about? That they don't know about me, that I want them to know, is that uh, I don't know, man. I, I I I I put my shit on the table so much, man. It ain't too much that people don't know about it me, man. It ain't much to talk about. It ain't too much you don't know about me, man. Other than you know, 
I really love my family, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But you know that, because it's in my music. It's not too much, I don't, I don't put my music, right. man. I wear my heart on my sleeve, and, yeah. and this is just what, you, I think that's what you should do in, in music. You know, the same way the greats did it, the Pox, you know? Like, you know, he, he it ain't too much you ain't know about that dude. You, it, it, think about it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless it's something that you shouldn't know, like what, you know what I mean? But Okay, for those who don't know, let them know where they can find your music, you know? Yo, listen, all you gotta do Apple is go music, on my- Spotify, what? Go on my, go on my Instagram, I got a link in my Instagram, which is, my, my, my Instagram is Flash is Hip Hop. I got a link in my Instagram, it'll take you to everything. I'm on, I'm everywhere. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you got, I'm on it. So, but I got a link in my um, bio that'll take you wherever you need to go. Also, make sure you follow Culture Pushers Collective at Culture Pushers with a Z. With that, that's P U S H A Z Collective. Culture Pushers Collective. That's me and Tex Brand that we pushing as well. We got the merch coming. We got the Culture Pushers shirts coming. I got my line, Bismillah, coming. That's the law shirts you see. I'm going to be sending some over there to YD. Don't get jealous when you, you know see what I'm mine. Because so, I'm going to be rocking it soon. Make sure, make sure y'all <laughs> tap in, man. Flash is hip hop. Right. Culture Pushers Collective. And make sure y'all follow Tex Smokey La. That's my partner. Yep. And make sure y'all also follow Jazz Diamond. That's the person, if you ever want to get in contact with me or contact with anybody about some business, or right. just hit up my man, Y Dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, one last question before we get out of here. Mm -hmm. What is the most dangerous thing about this music industry? One word. Business. The business. OK. The business. The business. Make sure your paperwork is right. <laughs> Make sure your, the lawyer is there. Make sure you read the, the contract business, like man. a week before you sign it. The and business. make sure that you're not going to be around them clowns in the hood that are going to be jumping on the, oh, my man got signed right now, we, we made it out. Listen, nah, it's not like that. As much as you love doing what you do, the business can make you hate it. The business part of it can make you hate it. That's crazy. You That's know? crazy. So control your own business, man. Mm -hmm. You hey, know? thank you, sir. Yo, love. You all love. Know. Bless you, man. Absolutely. Like Long life, man. good health, and uh, a lot of prosperity, a lot of happiness with the family because there's nothing more important than that, man. Inshallah, man. I can't well. wait to go back home right now because I miss my kids. Yo, I, I got to go man. check on the family. All right, brother, <laughs> yeah. man. All yeah. right, signing off, man. All right, ACTV, we live, baby. Catch us next. Salute. Salute. Right. Had to pull up and put in some overtime real quick. Light work, though. Check me out. <clears throat> Listen, Flash, I'm about to make that shit my real name Pop some clique and hit the booth, that's how I spill pain This ain't a scrimmage, this is real game I've been cold chilling since 88 like I deal with Kane Kane, deal, cold chilling I might see hot with the flows, y'all just bringing back that old feeling Bet on Flash and I bet it